You are watching a clip from the John Perry channel, Genetics and Evolution. It's hypothesized that human skulls ossify together later than other primates because our brains tend to grow larger proportionally mm. to our skulls. So uh, basically how our skulls fuse is that when you're born, skulls are made of all these little plates and you probably see it in your casts. You have all these sutures, right? All the little mm -hmm. zigzags where the bones eventually met. But those zigzags exist because those bones initially didn't meet. They actually had soft tissue, soft tissue in between. And that's why, you know, babies have those soft spots at the top of their heads uh, that people tell you not to press, but it's like really tempting. Anyway, um, <laughs> don't do it. But uh, <laughs> we have several fontanelles. We have one at the top. We have yeah. one at the back. The one that everyone knows is the one at the top, but we actually have them at several spots, including the temples. You hear that, folks? Don't poke babies' heads, okay? Don't do it. But if you want, you can poke the subscribe button and the like button and the little bell thingy. It seems to me that the brain, as the brain is growing, it is also somehow communicating with the skull case and telling it when it can stop growing. Because, you know, we have here, you can literally just bind a baby's head and it will grow long instead of round. Mm -hmm. which must mean that the bone is being instructed by pressure from the brain or by the internal organ. The bone actually is probably being instructed, instructed by the pressure from the binding itself because you're putting pressure on the frontal bones um, here and here. It can push out and, and kind of deform those soft areas because you're not working with plates that are attached to each other. You're yeah. working with floating plates. And then if that's if that continues to stay bound, which I assume that culture, you know, left them bound for a long time. Yeah, I think it's two years. Yeah. Or maybe so maybe they, even longer. Yeah. I, I would assume probably longer, but at that point the bone is, has no option but to ossify into the shape that it is kind of kept in. Mm -hmm. uh, and the brain just kind of adapts to filling that space. This skull right here. This is from a Peruvian. Her head was bound when she was a baby. The really fascinating thing about her is that her skull is not abnormally large. It looks abnormally large, but if you actually measure it, my, my nephew and I did a video where we measured this using Archimedes' principle, and we compared it to a normal human skull, and we found that hers is actually slightly smaller than the, the other skull that we had, but completely within normal human brain size range. She was just a small person. But yeah, for those watching, if you haven't seen the series Science vs. the Aliens of Peru, I highly recommend it. It's pretty fun. We looked at all of the different internet claims that people have saying that these things are aliens, and then we compared them to the actual data. Well, that's it for this clip, but don't worry. I post clips regularly, and every Thursday, I post completely fresh content. Make sure you're subscribed. Liking and commenting is also welcome.